This is Amy Agenda with me now, the Assistant Social Services Minister Jane Prentice in Brisbane. Uh, Jane Prentice, thanks for your time. The news poll really shows pretty clearly the challenge that both sides of politics have on either edge of the political spectrum, with the Greens at 10%, One Nation also double figures. Uh, look, I, I'm not going to comment on news polls. Uh, as you'd appreciate, uh, the panels of journalists would have nothing to talk about if we got involved as well. Uh, but I think there are some important surveys out as well this morning. And I'd like to draw attention to the CSIRO one that says uh, we don't eat enough fruit and vegetables. I don't know about your diet, but uh, that's something mm. that people in Australia need to take note of. And can I digress completely at that point and say uh, it's very much the time that we should be supporting our lo local producers after these floods. So don't buy imported fruit and vegetables. Get out there and support our local farmers. And a big plea to those of you still in flood-affected areas, please stay safe. Be careful of fallen power lines. Don't put your lives in danger. Don't put the lives of our volunteer SES workers in danger. It is just not worth it. If it's flooded, forget it. Sorry. And yeah, good, uh, good warning topic. and timely. No, no, but that's um, well, that was a, one of the best pivots I've seen from a poll question onto the CSIRO uh, dietary uh, recommendations. But well done on that. I, well, let, let me ask you the comments from Malcolm Turnbull at the weekend where he says, basically, I'll read you the, the quote that he gave at the Victorian Liberal Party uh, conference at the weekend. Menzies rejected the populism and authoritarianism of both left and right. He knew that the future was in the sensible centre. Uh, this message from Malcolm Turnbull, will it resonate? His critics say that he's been... Um, a sycophant to, uh, to the right of your party. Look, I totally disagree with that. Look, the, the most important poll and the most important view are the people out on the ground. I spent the weekend at markets, at shopping centres, uh, getting out away from uh, the halls of Canberra, and people are talking about jobs, uh, they're talking about uh, economic growth, they're talking about power supply, uh, some are even talking about football. And I think they're the people we need to listen to. And what they're saying is what the government's delivering. And on the company tax cuts, that um, was, well, basically it's honouring the commitment you gave for this term of parliament, all the way up to the, the $50 million turnover per annum for businesses. Do you, uh, do you hope and do you urge your colleagues to, to maintain the, uh, the focus on that with the, the broader 10-year plan right up until the next election? Well, I certainly do. As you know, I have a, a background in business. I had 20 years of my own small business, occasionally looked at being a medium size, but mainly stayed with a small business size. And, and can I just point out to many people that a 50 million turnover doesn't necessarily mean a big profit. Uh, there are a lot of small businesses out there that deal with, you know, sometimes technical, elaborate medical equipment that can have a turnover of tens of millions of dollars but still make a very small profit. So you don't want to get confused between turnover and profit. But at the end of the day, there are more than 3.2 million small businesses. I've got more than 13,000 in my electorate. They employ 97% of our workforce, 6.5 million workers. And tax cuts to them mean putting it back into the business. That's what we do in a small business. We reinvest by increasing the workforce, by paying better salaries. And that's the benefit of these okay. taxes. And would you hope that getting that sort of uh, that measure through, it was a win for the government, no doubt about that, in terms of your agenda, would you hope that that starts to, to resonate in, in polling terms um, over coming months? Would you be confident that that's the case if uh, those incremental wins keep, uh, keep stacking up? Well, I, I don't know that anyone can be confident about what the polls are going to show, but I'm confident that the people in my electorate, the people on the ground in business, will be very supportive of our government because we are delivering what we promised. In fact, in the first year, as you pointed out, we've delivered all our tax cuts in the first year of our term, and uh, the modelling shows that that money will go back into the pockets okay. of workers, and that's important. And Minister, just before we... We've got to go to the Treasurer, Scott Morrison, holding a news conference shortly, but quickly, on the CFMEU, it's um, warning about the building watchdog. They could really cause a, an, an enormous headache, not just for the big businesses in this area, but also major federal projects. Look, I'm quite concerned about their comments and by the ACTU president who says, you know, if you don't like a law, break it, and that clearly seems to be the way the CFMEU run their show as well. They, they don't understand, well, they clearly do, the impact they have on businesses, on subbies, on projects, on the cost of doing business. And it's reprehensible what they are doing to our building industry.
Jane Prentice, thank you for your time this morning from Brisbane. Let's